Hey, thanks for tuning in today. We're just gonna go through a quick installation video of this single wire connector bulkhead. It's just for like a four gauge cable. And uh, it's, it's a sealed application. It's sealed on the face plate. It's sealed on the inside of the connector and it's sealed on the back side of the, of the cable. So this would be a, an application where you would mount to your firewall. This would be your firewall and it just bolts right in, in place. And we're also gonna go through and show you a way to crimp these things with a tool that's uh, reasonably priced. Each kit includes a little paper template just to help you mark out the holes. This is a uh, just simply a, a inch and a quarter hole saw to go through your firewall, and then um, a single hole on each side. Start small, drilled up to like a seven thirty second size, and that'll be enough to uh, get you through. The uh, the little plate it comes in black anodized or polished. Either option is available. We'll go ahead and uh, drill this out. We're just gonna use this little piece of carbon fiber as a as a representing like the firewall. Hole is cut, so we'll just go ahead and put this into the, the firewall. This piece of carbon this represents your firewall. And uh, just line up your holes and bolt it in. Uh, this is a really strong connector. It's a, you know, it is like a composite plastic piece, but uh, really strong, but also no need to torque it to 50 foot pounds by any means. So just snug works. Let's go ahead and talk about the terminals that are used in this connector and also the cable. Uh, so again, a male and a female side, and you've got a hole, an inspection hole in the side that is crimped. So make sure that, especially on the female, you don't get confused because it looks similar side to side. The side with the, with the inspection hole is the side that the cable's going to go into. And that's a standard type hole where this is kind of a spring connection that goes to the male side. Um, again, cable. Uh, high quality cable. This is actually welding cable and very flexible. This is four gauge. And if you look, it's got um, a high strand count, uh, smaller strands, which is generally gonna be found in higher quality cable. And also you'll see that they're a little bit smaller diameter than some of the low quality cable. So uh, what we're gonna do is strip some of the, the insulation back. And what you wanna do is strip just a little bit more than you see right there. So you wanna go ahead and come down a little bit further so that it can be seated, so the actual cabling can be seated completely into the terminal. One thing I like to do when I'm stripping the, the insulation off of this four gauge cabling is to put a piece of tape on it. I just use this as my guide, the terminal, to make sure that I have enough depth, plus a little. And then I'll often just use a utility knife, just make sure you're really careful when you cut through the insulation so you don't get into the wire. All right, so if you use a, a utility knife or a razor blade to strip the insulation, you'll notice that you don't have to cut all the way down to the, the cabling to, to pull the piece of insulation off, and that way you don't damage any of the conductors. So this part here, um, you know, we want to be able to crimp this on. Now, this is a little tricky because this really fills up this cavity here. This this four-gauge four, four gauge, um, cabling really fills up the, the cavity, which is a good thing, but you got to be kind of careful and kind of work in all of the conductors here. Now, if one or two conductors gets a little rowdy and wants to cause you a problem, then it's not the end of the world. Just kind of trim them off. They're such small strands. So there we are. Push it all the way down, and we have just a little bit of gap down here. You can see inside this hole, you can see all the, the conductor strands in there. So um, at this point, we can move on to crimping. I got to say, this was actually a big problem in coming up with a solution for a four gauge wire to go through a connector like this. And the reason is, is because the actual specced out tool to do the crimping is around $1,600. So not very feasible. But um, the important thing about the way it crimps is that it's consistent all the way around and that it, it leaves a way for the tool to come in there and remove the, the terminal out of the connector. So you can't just, you know, smash it down or, or do something like that. But Devin Vanderhoof was actually uh, making a video where he showed crimping um, lugs onto battery cables and, and that sort of thing. And he showed these these crimpers and they're actually like 40 bucks or less than 40 bucks on Amazon and they're like a they call them like a 10 ton um, crimping tool hydraulic crimping tool and they come with a whole bunch of different um, 
dies in here for different sizes of, of terminals. And I thought, wow, that, that actually, you know, kind of makes a hex shape that might, might work. And it came with um, everything from like a 70 to a four um, uh, set of dies. And I'll talk a minute about that real quick about what that means. But you use a set of 25 um, dies for this, this terminal. If you use this tool, uh, all the dies are listed in square millimeters or CSA, which is Canadian Standards Association. And if you look at this chart, you have a four gauge wire. It converts from four gauge to 25 square millimeters. And that's how we knew which die to use. So we'll go ahead and crimp this. Now, it's actually easier. I'll leave a link to uh, Devin's video because he shows how to hold it in a vise and whatnot. So that's much easier than what I'm doing here. But um, you pretty much just uh, you know slide it through there and you seat it up against the shoulder, and then you use the hydraulic actuator to crimp. So after you crimp it, you'll crimp it all the way down until basically the dies bottom out and you can't go anymore, and this is what you'll end up with. And of course it's a hex, you got six sides, and you'll see that little inspection hole, you see all the conductors in there, and it's it's on there. Give it a good tug test, make sure you've got it, got it in there good, but uh, so far it's been very successful on a, a cheap set, set of, uh, of crimpers, so. Um, Give it a go. We'll go ahead and put the terminals into the connector. Now, the receptacle takes the pin on this connector and uh, each connector side has a seal. So this is how it looks. You can kind of see there's little tabs in there that uh, the collar of the terminal clips into. So um, you can either put the seal in here first and slide, it, slide the uh, terminal in, or you can slide this through the terminal. Um, either way works fine. We'll go ahead and do this. Now it is a pretty pretty snug fit. It, uh, it does seal off pretty good. So we'll just go ahead and leave the seal in. And um, sometimes a little bit of lubrication helps uh, to put that in. Um, you can use a number of things, some like rubbing alcohol or, or something to, to do that. That, that um, evaporates. So also here's this CRC electronic cleaner. This stuff evaporates real quick too. So you can just get a little bit of wet. Again, it does evaporate pretty quick, but uh, it helps lubricate it a little bit while you put the connector in. And this already clipped in. Just went right in so you can see the pin coming through there. And uh, we'll do the same thing with, with the uh, plug side. Drop this in. Give it a little spray. Go ahead and get it right in there. You can hear it click in. And there you go. You've got your uh, both your terminals seated in there, and so um, yep. So you can just clearly see it's uh, just a matter of clipping them together at this point. First couple of times that might be a little stiff; they kind of have to align just a little bit, but um, it'll be easier the next time. And uh, there you go. Then you have your four gauge connection. And it comes apart just like that. Let's say you want to go ahead and remove the terminal and the cable for some reason out of the connector. Uh, not a huge deal. The first thing you'll do is just take a little screwdriver and fish the seal out. I already did that. So uh, slide it out, out of the way. Um, in this case, I'll just go ahead and remove it. Um, generally, if it's on a full length cable, you're going to go ahead and, and fish it into this slot like so. Um, just uh, because it's a remnant I've got here, we'll just go ahead and slide it over. But uh, you're gonna get down here just like a lot of the other Deutsch connectors and um, slide it down there. Generally, you kind of get it into a spot where it clicks and it's gotta release those tabs um, that are holding that collar in. And so, so it takes a little bit of work sometimes, but uh, that time it just came right out. And uh, you see that just kind of slides up there on the collar and that's how that works. And um, of course, if you wanna put it back together, just slide this off and put it back in. Not much to it, just a quick video on how to pass a four gauge wire through your firewall in a way that it can actually be removed quite quickly. If you have any questions, give us a call, shoot us an email, or check out the website. Also check us out on these social media platforms. Like, share, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever it deserves. And thanks again for the support.